Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. And today's project is this cute little bench. Um, we are going to update it and I know there's gonna be some people that are gonna say, oh my gosh, please don't paint it. I paint furniture. I know a lot about furniture. This is not anything antique. This is not anything valuable. And this thing will be so much cuter painted. So, you guys don't need to see me. You're just going to watch what I'm doing. And if you guys have questions, I'll try to answer them. But you can see it's got great details. And what I'm going to go over today is sometimes you need less paint than you think you do to get the finish that you're going for. Okay, so I went ahead and kind of started on the back. So, I'm going to do a little bit more back here. And then I'm coming around so we can get started on the front. But... I did want to touch base with you guys and let you know there are still a few tickets left for the Bells and Bow Tour on January the 18th here in Atlanta. It's going to be super fun. We've got John DeRoth coming from Apollo Sprayers. We've got Hannah coming from Surf Prep. We've got Drew Dodson from Drew Dodson Designs. I'm going to be there. It's going to be too much fun. Sandy Harbor from Urban Rebel Designs is going to be doing a paint pour demo for you guys. Heather Marzigliano is going to be there. Bruce Davis is going to be there. It's going to be too much fun. Okay, <laughs> here we go. This is a cute little storage bench. It is up on my lift cart. A lot of you guys sent me messages that you got a lift cart. Congrats. You will never be sad about that. And several of you got surf prep sanders, so good for you. All right. So, I am going to start on this, and I'm not painting the inside because the inside looks great. And we're going to just start here, and I'm going to tell you, when you've got a lot of details, you don't have to go crazy with the paint. Because you're probably going to darken those details back up anyway. So, just run that brush back and forth across there. And leave a little bit of the dark. It can be a really quick update in some cases. Now see, look at that. Already, it looks better. Already, it looks better. All it took was that little bit and it already has so much more personality. I'm gonna swing you down a little. There you go. It's got great claw feet. So we're gonna do that and you'll see I'm not reloading my brush because the finish that I'm going for is more of a worn, aged finish. So you don't need a ton of paint on your brush. And I think a lot of times you guys think, oh, I gotta cover every bit of this up. But sometimes you're gonna cover it up and then give it dark highlights again. So why cover it all up to begin with, right? Just go back and forth across there and update it a little bit. Now the, the bench part, I probably will put a little bit more paint on there on the seat because that's what I'm going for there. But over those details, I'm gonna give it some low lights anyway, so there's no reason to put way too much paint on there. And on these feet, oh my gosh, these claw feet, you gotta have some on there. I'm gonna swing you down so you can see how cute the feet are. Look at those feet. Beautiful, aren't they? All right, so I'm gonna turn you back up right there. And you can see I have not reloaded my brush. I am just using a Dixie Bell Mini, and I had somebody ask me one day, the reason mine have pieces of string on them is I hang them on my cart to dry, and I have little metallic, little metal hooks that are magnetic, and that's what I hang, that's what I have the string for. So those of you who have asked, that's why my brushes have string on them, because I hang them on my cart to dry. All right, so you guys can see in just that little bit of paint, in that little bit of time, we've already got this thing going in the direction that we were shooting for, and we didn't go too crazy with the paint. So we haven't used very much paint. Now we're gonna go back across here, and this one does, you know, like with any bench that's used very much, it does have some dents and dings and bumps and nicks and scratches, but you know what, it's okay. It's part of its personality. All right. Now make sure when you're brushing something like this, um, those of you who know, know me know I like to spray. I'm a huge fan of spraying, but sometimes the uh, finish you're going for calls for a little bit of a brush. 
and the finish I'm going for on this one absolutely does. And you'll notice I'm misting my brush with water because I like for my paint to move very well. And Dixie Belle is a water-based product, so just a damp brush keeps everything moving. And I don't want a ton of paint all over this thing because that's not the finish I'm going for. The finish I'm going for is not a ton of paint. And you'll see I may do a little bit more dry brushing of the paint because it gives me a layer another layer of paint to go on there, okay? Because I am going to layer different colors on here. I don't know if we'll get it all done today. If not, we'll finish it up on a live on 44 Marketplace. But I do what we're going for. All right, so there you go. So you guys can see. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna layer some other colors so that you can see where I'm headed with this. All right. We gotta throw a little bit of paint on that seat right there, okay? And you'll see, I'm gonna put a little bit more on there just because it's gonna get a little bit more wear, but I don't want it brushed thick. It's gonna have light spots in it because that's the finish we're going for with this piece. It's already got bumps and bruises and everything, and if your paint starts drying up, miss your piece. Just missed it a little bit. If you don't follow me on 44 Marketplace, I'd appreciate it if you did. Also, I've got a giveaway on YouTube that ends at midnight tonight. I'm giving away $100 worth of product. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel and comment on my most, like and comment on my most current video. And the minutes that you watch my video really help me. I, I greatly appreciate all of the minutes I can get watched because that goes in my favor. Then sometimes that'll help YouTube recommend my videos to other people that don't already subscribe to me. So as many minutes as you guys can watch, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, I'll go, go. I think when I was cleaning it earlier, I got a little residue from one of my rags. Okay, can you guys see where we are now? We're almost finished with this. And how long have we been on? What, five minutes, 10 minutes? And of course, I have a shy water bottle. Every time it gets on live, it forgets how to spray water. It works fine unless I'm on live. And if I'm on live, it's like, well, I don't really remember what we're supposed to be doing today. All right. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna leave all of this paint that I put on here because I've actually got more on here than I wanted. So I may distress some of it off. And if I do, it's not that anything needs to be sanded. It's just so that I can accomplish the finish I'm going for. I, I may do some sanding. So if you're watching from somewhere and you're thinking, oh, it's gotta be sanded, it does not have to be sanded. I may just do a little bit of distressing to get the look I'm going for. You'll notice I haven't reloaded my brush. I'm just kind of unloading my brush on the back of this seat because I am trying to just get a little bit on here without going too darn crazy with it. No need to put extra paint on my brush when the paint that I've got on here will already get it on there. So you can see, I want more in this area than I do over the flowers. Can you see what a difference it is from this one to this one? All right, so you can see how you can make a quick change. Now, because I've just reloaded my brush, you'll notice I'm gonna brush this arm because I don't care if the arm has a little bit more paint on it because I can always distress it off, but I don't want over the flowers to have all that extra paint. So I, even since I just reloaded my brush, I'm not going to brush over the flowers until I get the majority of the paint back out of my brush again because I just want the residue of the paint to go over it. See, when I start brushing, there's not nearly as much paint in it that way. Oh, sorry, I got you guys down too low. My apologies. All right. So you can see, if you want it all up in your crevices, 
roll it around a little bit. But otherwise, you just want it to be have like butterfly kisses. Just let it catch right across the top of that. All right. So you can see we're just basically almost whitewashing it at this point. Okay? And we're going to go back in, and since we're going to reload our brush with a little bit of paint, we're going to brush on this side to get the majority of the paint back out of our brush again. Because I don't want that much paint on my piece. Even though I just put a little bit of paint on my brush, it's more than I want on there. And I don't want to chance it. So see, there we go. Now we're going to brush back and forth. Now we're going to do the flowers. So to do the flowers, we're going to go up and down. And that gets it on our flowers. And then if you want to go side to side, you can do that as well. And it's catching on all those flower petals, all of the raised area. Now I'm going to take my brush and go down in these little creases and crevices around it because I want a little bit more paint there than I do the rest of it. All right, I've got just about all the paint I can get out of that brush for right now. So that means we got to reload a little bit in there, but I'm going to get every bit that I can out. All right, so you can see what we've done so far in what? 12 minutes. So you can see how if you're using Dixie Belle paint, you can update a piece of furniture in an afternoon, in a day, whatever, very quickly. All right, I'm going to see if I've got too much in here. Yep, I've still got more in here than I want. So I'm going to brush this side a little bit. All right, there we go. Okay, now go up and down over this, but very lightly, very lightly, and then go side to side. Again, very lightly, almost no pressure on your brush. And then you can brush these edges, just like that. And you can get it down as far in those crevices as you want or leave it out. It totally depends on the amount of pressure you put on that brush as to what you're gonna get down in there. All right, so you can see where we are. We've got a little bit on each one. Now I'm gonna go back in and finish brushing these sides. But before I reload my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and unload the rest of what I've got right here on this side. Gotta get the back of this leg. And that's the thing to remember, when you get ready to do it, when I'm spraying, usually I spray the legs first while it's upside down and then go from there. So if you're brushing it and you didn't brush your legs first, don't forget them. That's easy to, ha that's easy to do. All right. Okay. All right, we'll finish the back of this later when y'all aren't standing here waiting on me to do something else. All right, I've got, oh, never mind. I think I only have about two more strokes and we're finished on this back, the sides of these legs and we're done. All right, so you can see where we are now. We have gone through and we have put a little bit of paint and I mean literally just a little bit of paint on here. Now the question becomes, how much more paint do you want on? How many other colors do you want on this piece? That kind of thing. You can see that we already have some highlights and lowlights that are naturally created by us just doing the light over this, okay? But I'm gonna tell you a little secret. This is sawmill gravy, which is a little bit darker than a, uh, than a white. So if you have a white, like a fluff or something like that, which as luck would have it, I do, then we can go over that and it'll give a little bit of a lightness. Well, it would if I could get it open. All right. Maybe, maybe not. All right. So, now this is sawmill gravy. And for those of you who don't know, sawmill gravy is a, not quite as white as a fluff or a cotton. But if you have a fluff or a cotton, they are fantastic to use to give a little bit more highlighting. It's a great way, watch this. Can you see how that little bit 
makes such a difference. And it's just more of a tone on tone little piece that you can do that adds to your piece. Now, of course, cotton is gonna be the lightest one, but you can use fluff, you can use cotton, you can use whatever you would rather, but it gives it a multi-tonal effect while being in the same tone at the same way. Can you see how that looks on there? I don't know if it's showing up as well. But that's the way to give a little bit more depth and dimension. And like I say, now you're not brushing very hard. You're just letting your brush catch on those edges. And if you want your, um, you can dampen your brush and that way more of the paint will come off. It's totally up to you, whichever way you wanna do it. But can you see what a difference that little bit of white makes? I don't know, is my phone zooming in? I hope it's not mine. But it's totally up to you. If you wanna blend something on here, you can do whatever. I don't usually like to blend on something like this. I like to just add a little bit of a, a rub on here so that it's, I don't know, that it's just a highlight. And it, you know me, I gotta have a piece of cardboard to offload my brush because I don't want the whole thing to be white. So I have to make sure I don't have too much of it. And you can see it's got great little attributes here and there. And it's a great way to just give it a little bit more depth. I don't know how well it's showing up, so I'm gonna scoot you guys up so you can see. All right. You're right up against it there. Can you guys see how different it looks? Can you guys tell the difference where I've put the, uh, the cotton and where I haven't? Can you guys tell the difference there? Good. I wasn't sure if it would or not. So you can see what I'm going for is a little bit of a washed look. And you don't have to put it on the arms, but I like to layer it all over when I'm doing it. I want it to have a little bit of that top color all over not just in these details, but you can see, and then typically I like to layer at least two or three colors. Uh, driftwood is a great one to layer in there. Manatee is good, but Manatee is a considerably darker than this palette that I've got going right now. So ma while Manatee is good, you gotta be ready for that, that difference. It is a little bit darker. And if you want more, you can spritz your brush. If your Mr. Bottle will spray for you, like mine will not sometimes. But it just, it just takes a little bit here and there just to give it that little push. Now I'm gonna show you up close on this right here. Okay, you should be able to see, now watch. See how that updates that just that quickly? Just a tiny bit. You're not even going that crazy with it. Just a tiny bit. And on these feet, I don't know if you guys can see the feet. Can you guys see them? On the feet, you wanna pull up. Go up and down. You don't wanna go across, you wanna pull up and down. Just enough to give that a little bit of wear. You know what I mean? There you go. See like that. Several of you have asked me about boot camps. I have boot camps starting in February. It is sold out, but I am gonna post uh, 
April's and May's coming up this weekend, to, today. All right, so you guys can see where we are. See how that adds just a little bit and you can go back and forth across the front of this. And it just layers it in there so that it's a tone on tone, but still gives you a good bit of texture and depth to your piece. I'm gonna scoot you over. Hope I'm not making anybody sick. Whoop. Maybe I'll just let you look at the floor. I'm just kidding. All right. So you guys can see that is with just two of our colors, okay? We have just added two of our colors. We, you can put as many of them as you want on there, but you get an idea of where I'm headed with it. All right. So if you have questions, like I say, um, a lot of times if you follow me, you know I am a girl who loves me some, uh, I, I like them all. I like pine cone, I like uh, coffee bean. Uh, drop cloth is a great one to add to this, this color palette because the uh, drop cloth is an off-white so it gives it kind of an older look. But you can see how it doesn't really take much paint. It just takes a little bit of paint on your brush. Now my base coat, I do use a Dixie Belle brush, but the rest of the time, most of the paint is put on just with uh, just chip brushes. And most of my chip brushes have seen better days. I mean, I just want it to get just a little bit of paint on there and go from there. Now, if you get too much light, you can always go back in and layer a little bit of dark in there and it'll come up with what you want. Another one that if you follow me, you know I love me some pine cone. I'll show you how cute it looks. It adds almost a little warmth, a little bit of rust to it. Let me grab me another brush here. All right. I'm gonna take a little pink brush here. I'm not really sure what was last on it, but it's still pink. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of um, this in here. And see, we're just gonna add a little bit here and there. Just enough on this seat to give it a little bit of warmth. And then I'm gonna take my, there we go. See, it just warms it up just a hair. Can you guys see what I did there on the seat? I take my pine cone and put it on and then go back over it a little bit with my brush that I was highlighting with because that way it keeps everything, it softens the look of what you're doing and it doesn't really take away from anything. So, if you guys have questions, the best thing to do is to, um, the color, the base color that I started with was Sawmill Gravy, it's the darker color, and then I layered cotton over it. I thought it was fluff, but I actually picked up cotton. And then I did use a little bit of Dixie Belle Pine Cone. Now I will go back in and I'll put some grays and stuff on here because that's kind of what I have in mind for it. But you can layer as many or as few colors as you want to get the look that you're going for. But I did want to show you guys how quickly you can warm it up, you can cool it down whatever way you want to do it. Thanks for watching today, guys. Like I say, y'all follow me on 44 Marketplace if you don't already. And if you have questions, I'm always around. Thanks a bunch.